Hey, what's going on guys? My name's Chad and today we're taking a look at Fnatic's first wireless mouse ever, the Bolt. Now this is a pre-production unit and there will be a few differences from the final copies and I'll point them out as we go. Now obviously Fnatic did send this out to me for review, but that's not going to affect anything that I have to say about it. And if you decide you want to pick one up, I'll have links down in the description below. All right, let's check it out. All right, so the Bolt's coming in at a cool 80 bucks and it's available in two colorways, black and white. The black model is rated for 67 grams and the white is actually two grams heavier due to the paint they used and the white copy I have weighs 70 grams on the money. The dimensions here are 120 millimeters long, 55 millimeters at the grip, and the height is 38 millimeters tall. Inside the box, you get the Bolt itself, a USB type C cable, a dongle, and an extra set of PTFE feet and these extra feet are 0.8 millimeters thick versus the one millimeter thick feet that come pre-installed on the mouse. And it's really nice that they're giving us USB type C and an extra set of PTFE feet at this price point. Also, the base of the dongle is fully covered in rubber and it doesn't slide around on my desk as much as a lot of other dongles I've used in the past. So that's a nice touch. The cable here is very decent and it doesn't give too much feedback on the mouse if you have to play with it plugged in, but that's not likely to happen because the battery life on this mouse is excellent. This has both 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So if you wanna save some power while browsing on your PC, you can switch it over to Bluetooth and the battery will last you up to 210 hours with the RGB turned off. Switching it over to 2.4, you'll get the full performance of the 3370 sensor and up to 110 hours of battery life, again with the RGB turned off. I charged my copy to full when I got it and I haven't had to charge it yet. So far, the battery life has been great. The shape was designed for medium-sized hands using claw and claw palm hybrid grips. And I think if a Viper Mini and a Zowie S2 had a baby and cut the cord, this is what you would get. It's very similar to the S2 with the hump being a little higher and more curved on top with a steeper slope going down towards the buttons, which gives me serious Viper Mini vibes and I dig it. My hand size is 19 by 11 and it fits me perfectly. The hump tucks back into my palm with a nice snug fit when claw gripping and I can really anchor my thumb, ring finger and pinky well on the sides and lock them in while my knuckles make perfect contact on top and this just makes for an absolutely killer claw grip that gives a ton of control and stability while being super comfortable at the same time. And I love that there's no holes affecting my grip and comfort specifically on the sides of the mouse. So far, every grip I've tried on this mouse feels great to me, except fingertip. And I think fingertip could work, but this mouse wouldn't be my first recommendation for that. Palm is comfortable and very controllable because of the nice hump on top. It fills my hand really well and even my hybrid grip feels solid, but it definitely shines the most with a claw grip. Coating has a nice textured surface to it, and it might be a little slippery if you have sweaty hands, but for me, it's been great, and I get a pretty consistent grip, and personally, I wouldn't need to put any grip tape on this mouse. The build quality on my copy feels solid. If I squeeze the sides and the top, there's no creaking or flexing whatsoever. I do have flex on the bottom, and if I squeeze it, it does actuate the DPI button, but this will never happen in real use. And even if I press down hard with my knuckles, it won't accidentally actuate. Aesthetically, I think the lines on the side could be a little bit cleaner here. And I'm not sure if that's just my copy or if it's something that's going to be addressed on the final production copies. But it's important to note that I can't feel these lines with any use type at all. It's totally smooth. Buttons 1 and 2 do have a small amount of side play and a lot of pre-travel. I can actually feel the pre-travel when I rest my hand on the mouse, but in real use it's not causing any problems and this issue is being addressed in the final production run. The switches here are KL 8.0s which are fantastic and when I place my finger on the buttons to remove the pre-travel, the buttons feel great. So I'm hoping this is a representation of what the clicks will feel like on the final copies. They're very nice and crispy. They have a little post travel with the soft bottom out and overall they're pretty good clicks. Both side buttons on my copy have a little pre-travel with almost no post travel on my back side button, which can make it a little bit harder to spam. And these buttons are different from everything else I have. They're on the firmer side and they feel high quality, but they don't bounce back after being pressed as easily as most side buttons. Placement feels absolutely perfect to me. Both buttons are easily accessible whether you raise your thumb or just roll it over to click the side buttons. And obviously we have the DPI button on top here and it feels very nice and clicky. The scroll wheel feels very defined and tactile. You can easily feel each step but you can still scroll it smoothly in game or when browsing on your PC. It's made of soft rubber and has small bumps to help with grip and obviously it has RGB and some lightning bolts underneath the rubber.
Flipping the bolt over, we have two really smooth, 100% pure PTFE feet with no additives. There is a ring around the sensor, but it's really flat, so it's not actually making any contact with any of my pads. Overall, I've been really satisfied with the performance of these feet. They have a really nice smooth glide, and I haven't felt any scratchiness whatsoever on my copy, and I would be happy just to use the stock feet on this one. Below the top foot, we have the power switch where you can select Bluetooth off or 2.4 gigahertz. The sensor sits right in the middle of the mouse, and this is a PixArt 3370, which runs at a thousand hertz polling rate with flawless performance. I've had absolutely zero issues with both the wireless and sensor performance on the Bolt, and I think most of us know the 3370 is a top performer, and I'm really glad they didn't use a budget sensor to hit the $80 mark. The default steps are 400, 800, 1200, and 1600, you can go as low as 100 DPI and as high as 12,000 in increments of 100. The Fnatic OP software is in beta at the time of making this video, but I'm guessing it will be released sometime around the launch. This mouse does have onboard memory that can store up to four profiles, so you can configure the mouse how you want and then uninstall the software or just set it not to run in the background if that's your preference. Inside the software, you can change your DPI, angle snapping, lift off distance, polling rate, debalance, sleep timer, and of course, your RGB settings. And if software isn't your thing, you can skip installing it altogether and configure the mouse with several combinations of buttons using the quick start guide. And I really like that they're giving us the option to run software or not, as everyone has their own preference, but nobody's gonna be left out here. Gaming on this mouse was super fun, and it's definitely a top tier performer. Tracking and flicking felt effortless for me personally. The size and shape just fit my hands so well, and this might be my new main. Usually I main the Viper Mini, but this has been making a really strong case for me to switch as it just fits my hands so well, and it's so comfortable for me to grip. I think the shape and size alone will make this mouse a success, but then adding wireless and USB-C with an extra set of feet and all the right specs, like the 30, 3370 and the KL8.0s makes for a very promising package for only 80 bucks. And I think the only thing that will hold some people back is the weight being 67 to 70 grams. But in my opinion, shape is more important than weight. And I would use this mouse over the Super Light, the new G303 Shroud Edition, and also the Final Mouse Phantom. But again, that's for my 19 by 11 hands and grip preferences. This is an easy recommendation from me. And I think Fnatic has a huge hit on their hands as you get a ton of value for only $80. So that's all I got for this one, guys. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. And if you're still watching, you might as well just go ahead and subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.